Go, tiny leaf boat. Tell my story. Hi, Snuffkin! Moomin, come and get a load of this leaf boat. Oh man, that is a sweet leaf boat. I hope it goes all the way down the river and into the sea. Then all of the ocean will know and fear the name of Snuffkin. I would love to go sailing for real one day. Oh, well, then let's go. I got a boat. Snuffkin, where did you get this boat? Stole it, like how I acquire most of what I own. Don't worry, the people I took it from are rich. Have fun, Stork Maiden. Try not to die. I'm gonna go keep inventing the airplane or whatever my subplot is. Good luck. I'm sure it won't end in a fiery explosion. All right, let's get this thing to the dock and stock up on supplies and recklessly go out to sea without any charts or idea of where we're going. So they head home to fetch all the supplies that Moomin Mama and only Moomin Mama packed them. <laughs> Mr. Hemulin, wanna come on our Wind Waker-esque adventure? Hell yes. Moomin, I keep telling you, not everything with a sailboat is Wind Waker. Oh boy, I can't wait to go on a sea adventure with my best friends. Sniff, I'm afraid you're being written out of this episode. One day you'll learn to appreciate me. One day when I'm voiced by Warwick Davis, and that will be your one redeeming quality. Sniff, watch the house. I'm not paying you. <laughs> Well, we're lost and there's no win. Let's start deciding in which order we're going to eat each other for survival. Or I could just start rowing. Oh, yes, I suppose we should do that first, and by we, I mean you and Snuffkin. This is just making your inevitable loss in the Grokpocalypse easier. It's hardly moving! You'll have to do better than that. Little my, your whining isn't going to make us go any faster. So then, what's your excuse? That's it, she's the first one we're eating. No, wait, shit, look, topless chicks. It's 11 a.m. and we're already drunk. I know the feeling. I'm going to sink this bitch. Look, Papa, an island. I hope we're allowed to stay on it even though we didn't buy a getaway package from a tanuki. Look, dear, I found something you can make me coffee in. Yes, of course. I didn't want to look around or anything. Look, Mama, we found firewood. Our jobs are done. Is it okay if we explore the uncharted island? Of course. Off you go. Watch out for snakes. I think I'll stay here and help cook. I am a woman after all. Snuffkin says I get to be sacrificed by fire, then our souls will be bound forever. Sorry, Snuffkin, I know how much you want to gift this land to your god through the sacrificial mimble, but Mama says she doesn't want the smell of smoke stuck on her apron forever. It's alright, there's always drowning or poisoning or death by giant python. They're just not as glamorous. Besides, I need to know if this place belongs to anyone before I can properly give it to my lady Lord Groke. Oh, it does. Saw them a while back, because apparently I'm the only one with peripheral vision. You saw who lives here? What do they look like? Okay, you know those floppy tube men that fans blow into, usually outside of a car dealership or a store having a big sale? They look like that, but if you chopped off most of the arms and erased the mouth. That sounds fake. You probably just thought you saw someone, little Mai. I did see them! Don't fucking gaslight me! Ah, uh, yes, my subplot is very important and interesting, huh? Huh? Okay, giant pole in the middle of nothing with a barometer. That's not ominous at all. Am I doing this voice right? I feel like I'm slipping into Owen Wilson. Hey! Don't fucking touch your shit, man! Yeah, don't put your crazy fucking fingers on me! Well, this is how I die. Get him! Make him pay for touching my thing! He will slip his throat! Wait, hold on. Little Mai's not insane. I think I know what she's talking about. She saw a Hattie Fattener. Who or what in the hell is a Hattie Fattener? They have nothing to do with hats, are actually quite skinny, so I don't know what's up with that name, but I do know what they're about. They travel from island to island to throw sweet-ass rave parties during only the hoppinest of nights. They're annoying as shit, but they're harmless enough. Help! I'm contradicting what you just said! Moving in the pals then run to where they hear Mr. Hemulin shouting from, and find him being assaulted by a bunch of rowdy congoers that couldn't even wait for the rave to start before dropping acid. Slay him! Steal his toes! Yeah, there they are, the car dealership promoting little bastards. Help, I think they're trying to eat me! 
No, they're probably already hopped up on eight different things and think you're a dragon. What did you do to piss them off? They keep screaming things at me, and from what I can make out, they're mad I touched the barometer. Of course, they need that to tell when they can start partying. Listen carefully, Mr. Hemulin. Hattie Fatners are blinded by their own rage and can't hear shit since their ears are permanently damaged. Basically, all they have is their ability to sense movement and their atrociously short attention spans. So just wait for something else to piss them off. Hey! I think other people are on the side of touching our stuff, spreading them out their eyeballs. Now I'm just going to take this out of spite. Now isn't this lovely? A home-style campfire dinner with all of you. Nothing could ruin this moment. Oh, holy shit, there's a giant fucking storm. Where did that come from? Well, everyone, we're gonna die alone on this island where no one will ever find our bodies after they are feasted on by the pissed-off glow stick monsters when they come down and realize they haven't eaten in 20 hours. So, pick a god and pray. This is bullshit! I want it to party down! Maybe we have time to sail home before the storm gets too bad. That sounds like it would result in an even certainer death if the storm is really booking it. I don't want to be responsible for possibly making a wrong decision, so dear, what do you think? But you're the captain here, so no matter what I choose, you'll be responsible for it anyhow. God damn you, woman. All right, let me think. <laughs> Chancing dying alone on a deserted island wins. Snubkin, what the hell are you doing up here? It's dangerous! Isn't it incredible, Moomin? The most peaceful things on our Earth, the rain, the ocean, the sky, can also become the most savage of killers. The ironic beauty, the diversity of our world, how helpless we are to its power. I find it beautiful in a strange way. Bolts of electricity that can make a hundred-year-old oak explode into nothing but splinters. How blessed are we to live on this earth. What one wouldn't do but for a chance to have such power. Snufkin, you're trying to will a lightning bolt to obliterate Sniff with your mind, aren't you? I knew you'd understand. Should we worry about the Hattie Fatners? Eh, our camp is far enough from where they reserved their venue for their outdoor rave. Why would they do this during a thunderstorm? To push the limits, Moomin, glow sticks and fuzzy leg warmers in a dark room with strobe lights at Otakon can only do so much for so long. Lightning is pure euphoria to them, miles better than a windowless convention center ballroom surrounded by cosplayers, better than hooking up with one of those cosplayers in the bathroom only to find the next day that your wallet is missing. Don't ask me why I know how that feels. Oh my god, I take back what I said this isn't beautiful anymore. Oh my god, I think I'm gonna die. Oh my boy, you have no idea what pain is. Try me, girlfriend. Oh my god, this is lit! Get the fuck out of my way! Sweet light, like a thing! are just throwing a party, Snork Maiden. But don't worry, it's not like it'll go until 4 a.m. or anything. go on for much longer, right? They've got to tire themselves out eventually. Not with what they're on. Your typical Hattie Fatner has two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, and a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, and also a quart of tequila, a quart of rum, a case of Budweiser, a pint of raw ether, and two dozen emuls. Someone stole our thing! That guy has it! He has our thing! You can't Just me, or is the Eurobeat music somehow getting louder? Mr. Hemulin, you've become the sniff of this episode, so go out and see what's going on. I suppose that's fair. Okay, I gotta see this shit. Alright, yeah, me too. Shit, 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 run, oh god, there's a thousand of them, there's an entire field of radioactive stoners. 
All right, as usual, Snuffkin will solve the problem. Oh wow, they are, they are up there and they are pissed. Well, lucky for me, I stopped fearing death long ago. I don't think they want to kill us, but Mr. Hemulin, I think they want their thing back. Yeah, the thing! Give us the thing! Jesus! Jesus! Mr. Hemulin, give the glowing tube men back their thing. But my spite! You know, in the 30 years we've known each other, I never realized that you're kind of an asshole. Here, Moomin, you give it to them. You're smaller, they'll go easier on you. Be careful, dear. You're my only kid, and if you die, my mother will go right back to nagging me about why I haven't given her grandbabies yet. Look! The kid has our thing! Give us our thing, kid! Why is he made of mozzarella cheese? Look, he's coming over! He's gotta give it back! Ah! Uh, I like your music! I'm totally gonna make this a playlist when I get home. Sorry about our friend, he's kind of a weird dick. Here's your thing back. Yeah! Thing! Give her blood! We love you, mozzarella child! What the hell are you doing? This is how we show our love! <laughs> Mom, and I'm coming to be a good waifu and rescue you! Let's go party on the beach! Yeah! I make a Lavinia again! Are you alright? Pardon me, excuse me, coming through. Ah! Okay, it really feels like you did that on purpose. Are you okay, Stork Maiden? My head is numb. How do I look? Oh, you look ter- good. Look good, actually. Huh? No! I need my hair! If I don't have it, I look too much like you, and I can't date a gender flip version of myself. It feels so weird! Snork Maiden, it's okay. I have a special ointment for this exact thing, and your hair will come back all lovely and curly. I don't want nasty curly hair! Okay, I was gonna help you, but with that garbage attitude, you know what? Fuck you! You cow. It's like three in the morning, can we please just stop being conscious? After eventually falling asleep to the sweet sounds of Megalovania being played eleven times in a row in the distance, the next morning Snuffkin awakens Moomin. Moomin, wake up! You gotta come see this shit, it's hilarious. Look at him, Moomin. They're all hungover, trying to drive after waking up from passing out on the beach. Dude, where the hell are we going? Oh man, I was following you! I was following you! Gosh, Snuffkin, they're really weird. Yeah, well, you're a marshmallow hippo and I'm a hippie cat person hybrid, so... Glass houses and all. Where the fuck are we going? Snuffkin, you're really horrible. Hey, I'm not the one killing mailmen for fun. I kill them for religious reasons. The heavy fatteners really trashed the beach. We should clean it up before too many beer bottles and leftover molly get swept out to sea. And I assume by we you mean Snuffkin, little my stork maiden me. Yep. Just think, we could find all sorts of things lying on the sand. Cell phones they were too out of their minds to remember taking with them. Half full bottles of Everclear. Probably at least one widespread panic album. I hope it's Pink Floyd's The Wall. So the kids are fucking around, not finding much outside of empty cases of cheap beer and used needles. Moomin finds a giant, perfectly pristine snow globe in a cave, which feels like a terrible omen for some reason. Guys, get over here, I found a dead body. What? Holy shit! Snuffkin gets to find all the dump bodies. Check it out. All right, a drunk girl. Oh god, her eyes are still open. How'd she even die? Well, the corpse looks fairly fresh, eyes are glazed over but open, so I'm guessing it was a sudden death. My guess is she was dumped by pirates or the sea mafia, probably stabbed somewhere that's an instant killer. I'm surprised the fish haven't started eating her yet, though well, I'm not gonna look where they start first. I'll commit sacrifices to the Lord Drake that even I have standards. I wanna take it home. What would you do with it? I mean, definitely Come on, kids, we're getting off this godforsaken island. Moomin, why are you ogling this dead lady so much? What, do you think she's prettier than me? <laughs> Check it out! While Moomin was disassociating, I found these glowing rocks. I'm thinking of chucking them at cops. That's the spirit! Stick it to the man! Back when I was your age, my friend did the same thing. You kinda look like him. Moomin, she was only a dead lady. You could've never been with her. Stork Maiden, take the snow globe I found in that cave. I want you to have it. If I have to keep it, every time I look at it, I will be reminded of today. The day I came face to face with mortality. Every time I look at it, I will see nothing but her clouded eyes and stiff body. Please, take it. No thanks. 
And so that was the end of their first adventure in the boat Snupkin took from that rich couple. Moom and Papa learned that it's much more fun to sail the seas without charts or maps, because then you could end up at a sweet rave party. And for the first time, Moomin truly thought about how he and everyone he's ever loved will die someday. The end.